All right, hello, welcome to Adventures in Lolly Gagan. Uh, we are playing Werewolf tonight. We are continuing our uh, our Werewolf the Apocalypse campaign. Your future lies in dust. Uh, as you can see, if you're watching this, we're down a couple Garu tonight, but they will be back. Uh, but we're starting up the next story nonetheless. We're going to do a little montage to see some of the aftermath of the first couple of sessions. And then we're going to move on to some new issues that are going to start popping up. Uh, we're also going to get a peek into uh, the lives of some of these Garu and see uh, see what you all do kind of, you know, when... I guess when this shit's not in the fan, but since there's an apocalypse in the title of the game, I think the shit is just perennially <laughs> or constantly hitting the fan, so maybe that doesn't exist. Uh, you just so, kind of scrape it off, and then, like, next thing you know, you come out, and it's, like, back again. Just... Unless that's disgusting. What's wrong with you? Come on. I'm trying to... <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, but, uh, okay. What we could do... We, there's only three of you, so we could do, like, you know, quick, just remind us who you are, you know, try boss piss, et cetera, and then, uh, and then we'll dig in. So, uh, Kip, sir... What we got with Lou? Uh, Lou Riel is a uh, werewolf from somewhere else, uh, but uh, she is a private eye uh, who works with her her buddy uh, Riley Archer, um, and they uh, got in some hot water. They mostly investigate blue collar crimes, uh, and uh, at some point in time, um, Lou got shot for for her investigation. Um, otherwise, she's got a friend uh, named Calypso Circle, who is uh, also one of the uh, aged hippie spiritualists that we all hang out with all the time, uh, as one does. Uh, and uh, Lou is learning about the paranormal from this group. Nice. Nice. Yeah, we talked about beforehand that apparently Melissa's character, just a spoiler, also aged hippie. Is that right, Melissa? <laughs> aging hippie. So aging hippie. Maybe a slight okay. different distinction there. She's aging. Gotcha. Hasn't aged. In maybe. denial that she's actually old. Got it. <laughs> Understood. Uh, while you're talking, tell us about your character, Melissa, as well. Oh, yes. Uh, Selena tribe, Bendis. You know. Uh, yeah, she's a she's a werewolf. Uh, Selena is that that she is. <laughs> she <Shocker>. is a, <laughs> no. uh, yeah, sorry. I'm working off of like paper sheets with this and I'm not, it's not my uh, strong suit writing things by hand and then trying to read them back later. Um, so she is a children of Gaia Theurge. That is what she is. Fantastic. And you have terrible handwriting. I just want to point this out. Melissa thinks she does. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I'm well aware. <laughs> you have at many times said that you have uh, better handwriting than me. And that is not true. I don't have good handwriting. But yours is at a level that is just <laughs> There's amazing. the if I You don't even I recognize try, your own handwriting. And I so. rarely try hard. <laughs> I never look at my own handwriting. I'm like, what is that? No, I, you know, I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, as we only have three tonight, uh, we got Aaron. Aaron, tell us about Jacques. So, Jacques Roulette, his human name, is an owl rune born in that phase of the moon, the warriors of the Red Talon tribe. He was born a small black wolf cub in the West Virginia hills of the Appalachians coaxed as a wolf by kin finders into a pack in West Virginia, taught the ways of the West Virginia Galru, and would have stayed there his whole life until he done run afoul of a Pentex mining organization that had killed off his true pack, his wolf kin, and he done slotted every last one of them. And his alpha there and that's how he was raised. He was raised to call the leader of his pack an alpha. Told him, son, you need to run. You need to run far. You need to run west until you can't run west no more. And so Jacques, he did what his uh, pack master told him. He took to the hispo and ran night after night till he came to the deserts of Arizona. Ran across a wolf sanctuary. I found a human, of all things, one of those treacherous weaver lovers who cared for these wolves. And he thought, I might just sit here a spell, see what this is all about. 
He joined that wolf pack in that wolf sanctuary, and in time he found another pack of Garou and a corn to protect. That's Jacques Roulette, though he hates the sound of that human name as much as he hates wearing shoes. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. All right. We are going to... So let me do a quick summary, because uh, it has been a couple weeks since we played. We started off, first uh, first chapter, we're in the southwest, southwest U.S. Specifically, we're in, uh, we're in Arizona, east of Phoenix. And we started with a... a a dust storm, kind of an odd dust storm, very large, very slow moving and seemed to kind of spin and stay in place for a while. Much very similar to like a hurricane, which is not exact and not at all how dust storms work out here. And while you all were kind of taking shelter from this storm inside the heart and soul, which is Eustace's bar near your 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 grove, near your sep called Gaia's Grove, uh, you all were attacked by black spiral dancers attacked not just at uh, the pub, where a, a young or a new newly entered into the uh, into the sep uh, wolf named named Hector was trying to come and get your help because your your Karen was under attack. Uh, but also, uh, there we go again. It's care. It's like it's always gonna. It's just gonna make. It's gonna make Hester smile all the time. Karen, Karen. So you all <laughs> got into a bit of a fight uh, with that with that uh, black spiral dancer. You defeated it at, at heart and soul. Uh, but you then, and then you race back to Gaia's Grove. Now, Gaia's Grove, as we've we've mentioned before, is a uh, it is a a citrus farm uh, that uh, sits on the outskirts of Phoenix. Uh, it is where your sept and it was where your pack and two other packs kind of defend it in in, in, in a certain congregation with one another. And you also learn that you're like the highest sept elder and sort of like a de facto leader figure uh, of the of the sept named Adora. She um, she was missing. And when you raced back to the grove, uh, there was all sorts of damage. You saw also, uh, many of your your allies, uh, your Garu allies on the ground, seemingly knocked out. Uh, some of the the, the various uh, mundane, more human folk, the migrant or seasonal workers who work the farm, dead. And many of your, the, the trees like suffering from some strange kind of rot, and your buildings having having taken damage. And it turned out that there were there was a dirge singer, this, uh, this particular kind of, of of black spiral dancer, and they were trying to infect your uh, your Karen spirit, and uh, and they were succeeding until you all stepped through after a great deal of effort uh, into the Umbra, and there you uh, you all managed to to see this that that something had befallen your your wonderful spirit. And it was being attacked by some strange kind of a uh, uh, massive tether or tentacle that wrapped and constricted around it and was kind of draining it through a special rite or ceremony led by Adora, who has already gone inside. You all managed to pull from, with the exception of uh, of Duke, you all managed to kind of pull from uh, the the spirit itself, whatever this thing was, imbibing it, actually taking it in each of you, taking a piece of it into yourselves. In order to let that spirit and let your 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 spirit actually find some freedom, so we're going to pick up. Uh, <laughs> we're going to pick up moments later, uh, and there's going to do a little montage just to see the aftermath, and then we're going to kind of jump forward a little bit. But we see as you guys, the last thing we saw is I think you all coming back through the through stepping back into into reality, right, leaving up, and we see you all appear in the in the caves. Remember that your your Specifically, you had all built a church that had been damaged on top of a hidden cave system with a spring underneath, and that's kind of where your your cairn kind of manifests. Uh, and when you had arrived initially, it was drained, nearly empty, boiling, tainted in color. But now, as we we pick up in this little montage scene, we see all of you, Adora as well, exhausted, wounded. You can see both her and Eustace have suffered various wounds, bites, claws. Uh, from these black spiral dancers uh, that that aren't regenerating in the manner in which that you would have expected them to. Uh, from there, we see as the spring itself, the color of the water has changed. It's reverted back to its kind of crystal blue form. It's still fairly low. The water level is kind of low, uh, but it does seem as though the tide has turned. When you all emerge up to the up to the the actual surface level of your sept, you can see the dust storm has uh, has fizzled. Uh, it had already kind of started to fade away a bit before you even traveled over, but now it is is empty. 
And then what I what I figure we'll do is imagine over the next couple of days, couple hours, um, we can see all sorts of little things happening. We can see various uh, pack mates and sept mates that are kind of capable of doing so, gathering the remains uh, of those black spiral dancers that you had torn apart both here and even back at Heart and Soul, uh, delivering them like final annihilation. Um, I imagine, I'm just going to kind of turn this over to you guys. Is there a process for this, do you think? Because usually it's either silver or it's uh, like complete and utter destruction of bodies that kind of destroy Garu. Would you think that your grove would have a process for this? Do you think there would be like anything ceremonial about it? Would be there be like a specific executioner or would there be tools? Do you think that, uh, that your Karen would actually, or that your Sep would actually engage in? You can call it a Karen. Um, but we've got, <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got a lot of very traditional wolves. So rituals make sense, mm -hmm. um, which I probably wouldn't be into, but it makes sense that we would have like a ceremonial robe and something like walking through the grove at a certain time in the evening with candles or some or ritualistic. Okay. So we'll say then that there is, even even in this day, even the the this you know the disgusting nature of these, there's this there is still a ritualized process observed. You all still recognize maybe a certain level of ceremony to it. Um, would we say that it's more you just kind of deliver final blows with silver, or do you do or or do you all take a more holistic approach and just I complete? Go ahead, go ahead. I feel like I, some I of us that. would go oh. in different directions. <laughs> I think uh, I think Jacques would have been taught a very kind of formal process, kind of steeped in superstition for uh, cleansing the e an, an evil Garou, uh, and it would be to to strip the earth, strip the ground down to earth, and make a depression, and bind like the black spiral uh, dancer in in and strands of like silver barbed wire hmm. and place them face down with their hands and feet cut off and placed on their back and then burn down the bones and then their bones ground and mixed with silver and dumped in dumped in like a deep pool and so we say we could say that the grove remember that you have is so significantly large that there's probably there's probably certain chunks of it, there's certain sections of it that maybe are a little bit more wilderness, like haven't yet been developed. And maybe we dedicate this particular portion to some of these ceremonial processes. Um, would we, do you think that we, you all would have, you mentioned a pool. Do you think you all would have in terms of like disposal? And this is true, not just for this, but also maybe for some of these mundanes, you had actually humans uh, that work that were taking shelter from the storm. They're not supposed to be here after night, but they were due to the storm. Uh, do you have a process, do you think? Do you have like connections at like a waste disposal site? Do you have connections with like park ranger services, something like that? Do you think there's 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 places you know to go that you can get away with this kind of disposal? Mm. I was thinking possibly more along the lines of like, Mm, I don't know if this would fit. I was thinking f like a for science kind of a donation. Like we like know Cadaver somebody that knows stuff. somebody that sort of takes uh, kind of that approach where like they oh, don't ask a ton of questions about sort of where bodies come from because they're doing whatever it is and that I, they're doing. Yeah, because I mean, I could use my gift and I'm sure there are other Gauru mm -hmm. that can use the same gift and completely wipe out any evidence that of of how the these people died you yeah. know and all dna and evidence and then yeah i think that's a wonderful idea we turn we've got a contact maybe at the university of arizona or someplace and we just turn these bodies over to them and for uh the modern age i can well uh jacques covers the uh, dna i can cover any tech that would try to get pictures and or evidence sure. technological evidence i can erase i would have the i would guess We'd have to check with, with, with Eustace next week, but I would guess he probably doesn't have a ton of tech at his place. He's kind of old-fashioned, right? 
I uh, tried to text him in episode one. It didn't work. And he did it, yeah. <laughs> That's right, because he just <laughs> leaves it upside think, down. And his jukebox still has vinyl. <laughs> his jukebox <laughs> still has vinyl. <laughs> and I don't get the sense that Duke would be high up on tech. Oh, no, I, he doesn't even have oh, no. a phone. No, 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 no. Um, can we let's let's actually make a contact. So who who would we? So we said it's maybe a person that uh, ASU's closest college. If we wanted to make it like a like a shady ASU mm-hmm. satellite, one of the satellite campuses. Okay, let's get a give me give me a name. It's gonna be shady. It's gonna be a shady deal. Doctor Joaquin Fulbright. I love it. Fulbright. He's a Fulbright scholar. <laughs> All right. Okay. And maybe uh maybe he's aware of the Garu because someone in his family was found by a kin finder um and became a Garu. And so they still maybe not obviously not from our uh pack, but maybe one of the other packs that the Cairn has a re- a relative of of this Dr. Fulbright, and that's how he was kind of looped in. So we'll say that we see, like in this kind of montage aftermath, we see cleanup, we see physical cleanup of of destruction, damaged buildings. We see um, ruined trees, corrupted trees that are unable to be returned, being kind of pulled away, salvaged, loaded onto these trucks. We see bodies uh, after after they've either gone through some sort of ritual annihilation or just in some cases stripped of identity when it comes to the mundane humans. We see like these trucks, some of these trucks with these these human remains being delivered, con- like a, a phone call late at night. We see the like a back loading area behind uh, a life science building somewhere in like an ASU East campus uh, over by. Uh, I'm trying to think of where the East campus was. I think that's where the Boeing stuff used to be. But we'll we'll, we'll say that we kind of see like this this. It's kind of clandestine exchange happen as like a, a large truck. Maybe Jacques gets out, maybe a few others. And we just see these these bags or these 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 you know covered uh covered figures, maybe these tins, whatever it might be, can be being rolled in uh to like this. That uh, Jacques would get into a car at all. That's fair. That's fair. He doesn't like to. He does when it's expedient and he has no okay. idea how to drive and never will, but he will ride in them. But you always notice he's very white knuckled. He's like, this is wrong. My this is no way is for fine. a wolf to move. My driving is fine. It's all good. He starts to salivate a little bit like a dog does when it's starting <laughs> to feel car sick. We could have like either like a truck or an El Camino. So that Jacques that would can be always like El be Camino in the back. The best. El, El, El Camino for sure. We definitely have an El Camino. We should have set this in like 1977 or something like that. Like that's what it feels like. Yeah, probably were, when you all were young. Uh, okay, so hey, we could do a flashback <laughs> to the 70s. That's true. <laughs> so we continue over the course, of like the aftermath, and again, people start healing. Eventually, the the regeneration block that those wounds had. We even see use this like kind of co- coalescing. We see others as well, um, and over the next several days, like the there the grove visibly changes like we can see that there have been entire rows of orange trees that were felled or rows that were intentionally uprooted because some sort of canker some kind of some sort of sickness started uh, festering and shifting through them and there was like this concern that it might spread if not if not dealt with this lingering bit it also becomes clear like a dora Kind of goes into she she's spending much of her time in the in the caverns below. There's a concern that the spirit is kind of pulled away a bit and is kind of being more reserved. Isn't necessarily letting as much of herself into the into the community as before. The waters haven't fully returned to their normal lovers. They have risen. Though they are clear, the lusciousness of the trees is dimmed somewhat. Uh, and there's definitely a few days, a week or so, of a little. There's a little concern. Like that, you can tell the. The power, the quality of the the cairn has has certainly diminished somewhat, but not been depleted in its entirety. Now, in this time, we'll also see that Duke probably keeps a bit of a distance from you all as well. I think, uh, as he was the only one not to take into himself whatever that thing was inside the Umbra, 
and he leaves. He leaves this, and he also leaves you all like this cryptic message, handwritten, something about dubious topography and a retired academic somewhere up north. Uh, Eustace is dealing with the fallout of some issues at Heart and Soul. There was some damage that's being repaired, but there are also, it turns out, a missing drifter that apparently the headcount never quite added up when you kind of check your, your patrons. People remember seeing him, but then the, then the window cracked and crashed and things went crazy. They got chased into the bathroom and they haven't quite been able to locate them. And he's not in trouble. His own law enforcement contact, Deputy Quinn, is kind of giving him, giving him cover, but he's nonetheless kind of dealing with it. Uh, and so then I'll just turn to you all. Like, what do you think you all are doing over the next week as these projects, as the repairs begin and all this kind of starts happening? What is everyone doing? Like, what, is, what does life look like? Uh, in the interim. Uh, so we'll start with, uh, start with Lou. Uh, so having survived this and, and imbued some of this darkness, uh, Lou actually goes back to their apartment. That's not part of the care. And she actually maintains one outside, uh, where she has a son named Lucas. He's about 14 years old. Uh, and she kind of like, Together, they uh, decide to go on a hike on some weekends when he's not in school. She's not there very often, so they spend some time when they can together uh, and break into some abandoned buildings so he can take photographs. Uh, it enjoys his hobbies. Definitely didn't learn it from me. Uh, and uh, and then maybe we, we you know, just the, happen, the trail happens to walk by one of the compounds for one of the corporate people. And I also get some pictures and uh, we have a, a an enjoyable camping weekend uh, out out in the woods for enjoying nature for a bit. Okay. All right. So you get away. Uh, the the at, after a few days, it does feel that there is a sense of normalcy that somewhat returns to the sept, and and you do see people starting to venture out. No one ever leaves the sept unguarded completely, but there's like a rotation, and so it kind of opens up time for you uh, to go spend uh, with your family. Uh, what about Jacques? What does Jacques do in like this week long interim or, you know, interlude? Jacques would, Jacques would spend his day split between working at the Sept and working at the Wolf Sanctuary. Uh, he feels drawn back to the sanctuary every day, spending more time, uh, with the, with the veterinarian Robin and, uh, just doing manual labor, handyman stuff, uh, you know, and then maybe in the late afternoon, he'd shift into lupus form and run with the wolf pack. But at night, at least a couple of nights, he would uh, he'd run into the city of Phoenix into central city. And you'd see this large black wolf running down an alleyway and he would stop and there'd be a beautiful feral looking woman and she'd reach down and pet him and then she would shift into a wolf and the two of them would begin to ha hunt gangsters through central city always making sure to find some of the worst of the worst uh and tear their throats out then jacques would turn walk up the alley away a while while his dear friend Isabel feeds on her kill. Then he would come in and disguise the kill. They would both turn back to human form. Well, she to human and him to glabro form for a few moments. Perhaps share some time on a rooftop in Phoenix before she would flee before the coming sun and he would return slightly ashamed at his dark secret. Uh, back to the sept to uh, curl up as a lupus and sleep for a few hours. Okay. I would imagine there are times maybe when Jacques returns from these, uh, these runs with Isabel, where maybe like you pass by a few pack mates or just, just fellow Garou in the, in the sept. And you just see like a little crinkling of their nose from time to time. Mm -hmm. And they kind of stare at you as they, they, there's a, but then they kind of shake it off as they just probably just assume maybe some, not exactly what, but there's just some kind of scent of death mm -hmm. uh, on Jacques. No one really, I would imagine no one probably s says much to Jacques as I, I think a lot of folks are probably afraid of Jacques, I would think. 
he's, as he's very he, he's standoffish. Like I said, he he prefers yeah. to stay as a wolf and spends as little time in a human form as possible. So he, other than his pack mates, very few people within the sept know him well. Fair enough. And even and his then, pack mates don't know what he does at night. Uh, that is a big secret. We'll see if it stays stays hidden. Uh, and then we'll finally, you know, finally, let's go Selena. What does Selena do in this little interim? Uh, so Selena uh, was kind of quite distressed by, you know, kind of the trying to change forms, trying to do things and kind of being um, incapable of doing that. And so she is going to kind of spend really kind of every night outside doing like every moon ritual that she can think of to kind of strengthen that. So she is charging crystals. She's, you know, doing moon water. She's sleeping under the moon. She's doing like anything that she can think of to really kind of focus on that um, relationship essentially and really trying to improve that skill. Okay. And so we'll say some time passes, uh, probably a week, I would say. Uh, those of you who, uh, well, I guess it's just Lou who went out of town, uh, went camping, eventually you'll return. And I'll say, Lou, I'm sure you had your own, your own um, phones and such, maybe. You're a tech head. You probably don't go too far away from it at any time. But when you, maybe you don't check the messages as frequently. And it's around when you get back uh, towards um, towards the county once more, the county line, and over towards the Grove, and then maybe kind of driving home, you realize your your phone is finally catching up. Maybe you're out of signal, whatever it might be. And you have so many messages, just so many, all from Calypso, Calypso Circle. And, and it's emergency, 911, needs your help of that variety over and over and over again. And they started, uh, we'll say that's a Monday morning. We'll say maybe you get you and your, your son drive back Monday morning or whatever it might be. Uh, Lucas, sit. you're good at driving. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I've got my, I've got my, uh, permit and everything. Yeah. You can avoid the cops. Uh, you can drop me off at the, the place I've been learning. <laughs> 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 so, We'll say uh, he drops you off, and as you as you get there, where we we're in a we'll say we're in a dusty strip mall. Uh, it's a couple miles, several miles northwest, we'll say, of the Grove, much closer to civilization than your actual sept. Uh, we can see there's several storefronts, many of which are actually empty, out of business, etc. Uh, but the but the run of it, those that are in business, it's mostly like boutique shops and antique stores, that kind of thing, um, and. We we will say as so we're focusing in on one specific shop. Um, we notice that Lou, as you get dropped off, you can see the familiar El Camino uh, that is often used. It's a community car at the Sept, and you can see there inside of it, Selena at the wheel, Jacques next to her as they're kind of getting out at the same time. As Selena, you have been getting a s series of messages similar but yours have only started recently this morning yours weren't necessarily the emergency coming through and yours are from a madam helene and so as the three of you kind of move out get away get out of your cars you step in front of this shop you see this colorful window display there's tarot and palm reading advertisements crystals and astrology products what's the name of this shop uh, Lou and Selena, who both have contacts uh, that actually work within this shop. What do, what do we think it's called? Mystic Maggie's Maddening Mysteries. Oh, God. <laughs> I have to write that down because I'm not going to remember that. There's no one actually named Maggie in the shop. I'm calling it Mystic Maggie's because that's just a lot to write down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what were the other two words? Just Mystic Maggie's magical mysteries. Mystic Maggie's something mysteries. I I totally remember what I just said. <laughs> so we'll say 
In scene now, montage over, the three of you standing out in front of this. Lou, you have text messages. Selena, you have messages. There's never really detail in these messages. Jacques, I'm assuming Selena would have contacted you. And we'll say that both of you have messages, no details, but like 911 emergency. Uh, Madam Helene, for instance, Selena is sending like, like Crystal needs her help. You know, where's Lou? That kind of thing. Like trying to track down Lou. You all want to do Oh, hello. Is uh, there some messages? I I got some from Helene as well, but as usual, she just says "come quickly" and never says what it is. Uh, yes, uh, Lucas, you're good. Make sure you take the back roads and avoid the police. You just hear screeching tires, <laughs> a fishtailing vehicle, and then oh, just he needs bumps some more practice bumps. anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Child clear, of the Weaver <laughs> goes over a curb as he tries to turn onto the street. <laughs> he's, uh, he's young; he'll figure it out. Just hear a horns he, honking. If he's driving the El Camino, a mile away, still. Yeah. <laughs> no, you guys had the El Camino. Oh, okay. Whatever. So we we'll push into the. You push inside, and we see inside. It's just like homemade candles everywhere. There's essential oils. There's bespoke this, that, and the other. Uh, there's this, there's definitely incense burning somewhere because your, your nostrils are just, all of yours are just being agitated. Your eyes are kind of, uh, kind of getting water, you know, watery from the pungent odor of it. Um, you can see that there, there are familiar faces. Uh, so you can see that behind the store, like behind the, the counter, when you first walk in, we see Madame Helene in her sixties or so. Hunched over as she usually is, but she's got this perfect face, a face that looks like somebody 30 years younger. Uh, it's certainly cosmetically and, and, and pharmaceutically probably, uh, you know, amplified in some way. But it, but she is there kind of hunched over, uh, straight hair. She kind of comes in and she sees Selena. Her eyes kind of light up and standing a few feet next to her, uh, or I should say sitting a few feet next to her by the window, reading a book. With a big, big, you know, cup of tea, uh, still steeping, we see another woman also in her sixties. Her arms are bared uh, all the way up to her shoulders. It's almost like a muscle shirt because uh, it's displaying these large, uh, large flower tattoos uh, up and down her arm. And she looks at you all, and there's a sense of disappointment. You all would know her has blossom. You know that she has a bit of an eye for Eustace. And when she sees the three of you walk in, knowing that you're often with Eustace, her eyes light up. But then when the door closes and Eustace isn't, she kind of slink, you know, kind of shifts back down again with a little bit of sadness. And finally, M- M- Madame turns to you like, where have you been? We have been trying to call you for, t- oh, we are in such a state, Selena, Lou. And we then she had looks at Jacques and she kind of gets a little nervous. to attend <laughs> to. We, we we arrived when we could. We were dealing with some things, but... Yes, I was uh, in the woods a little bit doing a breaking and entering some abandoned buildings, you know. I don't need to hear that. I don't need to hear that. Oh, Calypso is in such a state. She is so very worried. Blossom, oh. take the take the register. And she like looks up and then looks around the looks around the store. There's like no one in here, and she kind of just shrugs. And then Madame Helene starts like bringing you all to the back, and she's like, oh, she has been worried for days. Her sister, her sister is missing. She's missing. And she pushes open a door and you can see like a little kind of employee area in the back slash office. There's like a bathroom nearby and you can see there is Calypso on a very plush, colorful uh, couch in this in this sort of area back here. She's got this curly, clearly dyed blonde hair, loose, colorful clothing. Her eyes are just hanging down, a bunch of sadness, tiredness in it. And she looks up, she sees Lou, she hears Madame, and she's like, oh, it is about time. I was wondering when you were going to arrive. Oh, God, I need your help so much, so very much. Uh, uh, yes, hello, Calypso. It's, uh, I guess, not good to see you if you're missing your sister. Yes. Oh, shit, it is a terrible thing. Uh, I think this is the voice I'm going to go with. There. This is Calypso. 
Yeah. And she's a smoker, yes, like me. So I light a cigarette. Here you go. Hello, she's fire? got one of the cigarette holders, in fact. Oh, very she good. holds it. She's like, I've Jock, been waiting for you. Jock snorts out heavily at the stench of the tobacco <laughs> and spits on the floor and goes into a corner. <laughs> <laughs> he's such an odd one, that duck. Such an odd. He's just wearing uh, he's wearing just cargo shorts. He's got a pair of Converse tied and, and hanging around his neck and a t-shirt in his left hand. <laughs> so so Madame Lean lingers. Uh Calypso. She she pats the pats the couch next to next to her and she's like motioning you, Lou, to sit down. Uh yes, of course. Let me uh, what is it that we would like to do today? <laughs> I would like you to find what happened to my sister. She's gone missing. It is, do you not read the news? Any of you? Do you not hear the... I don't read I was much. Uh, a bit in an investigation uh, over the weekend with my son. You have not heard of what has transpired. Don't you me to say... She reaches and she gets an iPad, but it's not like a new iPad. It's several generations old iPad. And so when she flips it open, it takes a little while to kick in. What she eventually shows you is she shows you a um, Arizona Republic article. Big newspaper in the Valley. And it shows uh, an article that is is basically the headline is something in the neighborhood of, of people go missing from North Phoenix restaurant. And as you start reading, Lou, and occasionally Calypso is like looking over your shoulder and like kind of pointing to this, like, oh, you can skip that. Look, this right here. Uh, but all these details are important if we're doing an investigation. So what you what the gist of it is, is that at a uh, at a diner called the Black Canyon Diner north of Phoenix, uh, everybody and, and just went missing uh, signs of, of blood and gore everywhere throughout the diner like just just blood skin tissue uh but not enough skin to make positive identification of a body but there were about two dozen people uh patrons employees one of those employees was calypso's sister tara uh and it happened early morning breakfast uh sun was out bright as day uh and when later on people kind of tried to go into the restaurant, no one, there were no bodies, no nothing. Uh, and it's like this this crazy mystery uh, that apparently is still being investigated, and it just happened within the last like 48, 72 hours or so. This is very male, but uh, Jacques. Uh, is this- I know you do not read, so here is the summary that I am I now can, telling you. I can read. I don't <laughs> read much. Waver <laughs> lover. Well, you're okay. There's no need to insult now. Mel is uh okay. We so Lou will sort of start uh, sort of pacing back and forth, a cigarette uh, between her fingers, uh, and goes, "Okay, so we need to find out." Um, Jacques, you probably have the best nose. Maybe we can find a trail there. Uh, I leave the police to me. I can I can tell them we're under investigations for of our own private personal look, reasons. Look like that. Look, and you can see that it's just like local. Like it, 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 there's basically a note. FBI field office consulting on the investigation. Oh, because it's such okay. it's such a strange, str- like a, like the the this, the circumstances surrounding it are so strange. Now, the diner itself it's it's a little bit north of Phoenix. It's about forty five minutes from here or so, kind of northwest of here. It's a little north of Phoenix, off a highway. It's not a major city, uh, but it is along a major highway, um, and. So it's, it's essentially the highway you would take to kind of go up to like Sedona and Flagstaff and all those. And, um, and there are other kind of shops and other things around. So it's not like in the middle of complete and utter nowhere. Uh, but it is, you know, it is kind of not the most, you know, the most populated area in the world. Uh, but, but Calypso is like my sister. She, I spoke with her the night before she, we were going to meet up later that evening after her, after her shift, she was, on for breakfast and she was on for lunch and then 
We are going out, us and Helene and Blossom. We are going to go. Uh, we are going to go watch a movie together. Very excited. Okay. Yes. Uh, don't worry, ma chérie. On va faire. We will. Sorry, sorry. Let me think. We will do. Yes, I know. I know. I know. Don't do the French. But uh, we can. We can see about uh, investigating location. Selena, maybe you have some crystals for uh, seeing things better. Oh, uh, we will definitely get what we can. Uh, it was. Uh, is there any? Have you heard rumors of, was there someone there? Like, is there any explanation that's sort of floating around as to who could have been there, who could have done this, or why this might have happened there? I, uh, no, no, there is nothing. We, we just know that uh, people say serial killer. Serial killer. What kind of serial killer goes into a restaurant in broad daylight and murders there's a, plus a fair people. number of them, but they usually do it more than once. But not all at the same time. That's why we thought it. That's why we thought, as she looks up towards Madame Halim, we thought perhaps you all, considering you know, might know more. It could be. I don't want to speak ill, but one of your kind, maybe. The carnage was significant. It can be one of the corrupt ones. They have obviously been more active, as we know. Or it could be a Fomori. Correct. Correct. But, and she's, like, confused. Because, like, she knows. She's she's in the know. She, like, like, as you said. Like, you said she's not just a mundane. She knows. But, like, but probably the specifics of it is, is a little bit. She's probably more of, like, a. Maybe more like a ghost. Actually, she might even know for more because she might be like a, a spirit. She might know more about the spirit worlds and things like that, considering what she does. Um, but you can see that she is she probably hasn't slept like in a, in a day or more. Uh, and she's just got her hands shaking from caffeine off to the side. Uh, but uh, we thought perhaps it was a vampire. But there is just so much blood. It makes no sense. Why would you waste it? Yeah, the leeches wouldn't operate a day anyway. They would have sent ghouls and taken them elsewhere to feed. They're much more subtle. Did they? Do you think that my sister has been taken uh, by ghouls shocks. to be fed on by vampires? Is this what has happened to you? It could very much grab, have happened uh, easily. <gasps> Lou will oh, grab goodness. both oh. of Calypso's hands in her hands and go, it's okay, Calypso. We will start our investigation. Jocks will go wait outside for a moment. And uh <laughs> Jock looks at Louie's like, no, I won't. <laughs> okay, well and S S Selena will sort of step in front of Jock so that Jock can kind of only see Selena. Um <laughs> and just say, So I so I think so I think at this point we would want to kind of calm everyone down and let them feel better that we're going to take this over and we're gonna solve this for them. And so she's sort of making eye contact directly at Jock, like we're going to make everyone feel a little calmer that we've got this and we're going to solve this. Oh, we'll solve it. We can't afford yes. to let any corruption fester within the city. Yes, yes, yes. The they, green they, mother must be protected. Thank. Yes, yes, yes. And so Selena will kind of go over. I would imagine that Jacques and uh, Madame Helene have had chats before. And so mm -hmm. like Selena will just sort of look over at Helene and just sort of that look of like, we're going to, do everything we can. Well, we've had some incursions ourselves recently, so we have some suspicions and we'll do what we need to do. And she'll kind of give her a, a, a bit of a an embrace, kind of just trying to reassure her. Okay. Yes, uh, we will do our best. So you can you can relax. We'll figure figure out at least what happened. And then um, she looks over towards Jacques. I'm gonna say Calypso does before Jacques pulled away. If you don't find my sister alive, please promise me you will rip limb from limb, whatever thing hurt her. Yes. And Selena will he look gets back close to and he sniffs. He sniffs her. Pack friend. 
If your sister's life has been taken, I will shred the bodies and souls of whoever did it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, he's very good at that. So we will at Wild, least get crazy revenge. Eyes kicks in. She <laughs> smells like cigarettes in desperation. And uh, but yeah, okay. What, what would you like to do then? And Jacques turns to Selena and uh, Lou. Are we gonna? Are we gonna drive out there? Yes, we. That have would to be the drive, fastest yes. way to get there. So Jacques drops his cargo shorts says, please take my clothes, and shifts into his lupus form so he can ride in the back of the Cam- El Camino. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. I feel like we just have like a fanny pack or something that they're ready to some yeah. like, stuff. Just a <laughs> small <laughs> backpack. Just close it. Yeah. Jacques go bag. Just so many of them. <laughs> yeah. Just stuffed everywhere. <laughs> All right, so... um. I turn it over to you all. What's what's the plan? Assuming we're done at um, um hang on. So Mystic it's... Maggie's Maddening Motherfuckers or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> mysteries. Same thing. <laughs> Magical <laughs> mysteries. Magical mysteries. <laughs> Maddening mysteries. Something. Same thing. Mm mm um, so, uh, Selena, if you can uh, navigate, I will take the car and drive. And uh, Jacques, you can try not to vomit in the back. Thank you. All right. He growls a little in his throat, but jumps in the back. Selena, it's not hard to find. Like, it's very easy. Uh, there's no issues, whatever. Uh, no roll or anything like that necessary. Uh, you Straight basically, shot, follow the signs. You just take the 17 north. Like, you head west a bit, and you take this uh, Highway 17 north until you start seeing the signs for Black Canyon. Uh, not many. There's only, like, maybe two exits, one of which seems to go to these Kind of, kind of like this commercial sort of way station. Not, not so much a way station. That's, that's probably that's a misleading statement. Uh, just a series of shops and things like that, including the diner, um, gas station, a couple other things like that. There's the basic things you would see off a, off a highway. And then there's another one, a little bit further north. That's uh, that's that's not really commercial. It's just maybe people, ranch owners, uh, uh, you know, environmental folk, kind of going around. So there's really only the one and uh, exit to get off. Plus, it's not hard to find because there is a colossal number of official law enforcement vehicles uh, that still seem to be situated here. Uh, mostly, you notice like there, there's you know, there's local law enforcement, but you do see some like you know, some nondescript kind of vehicles that you can tell. Um, the the full the full kind of strip of uh, of businesses maybe has somewhere between maybe six and ten, but again, they're all like. Fast food, gas station, convenience store, this kind of thing. There's roads that head kind of further north that parallel the parallel the highway and such. Uh, but you can tell that they are they are certainly have created a fairly wide perimeter uh, around uh, Black Canyon Diner. Um, it's it's not a, it's not a chain restaurant. It's not anything grandiose. Uh, it doesn't look. It's very unassuming in its presentation, almost old timey in a way, uh, kind of a throwback. Uh, as you drive north, it's it's this is like Phoenix from 20, 30 years ago and not like modern, which is, you know, a little bit more like a mall. Um, during the drive, Lou, were you planning on doing something since you were asking Selena to, to drive here? I think Lou was driving and I was navigating. Oh, I'm sorry. Really I got it backwards. It's, okay. It's okay. All right. So then, Selena has zero drive. I have drive. You can still drive. I took that skill. <laughs> you can drive a car with zero. It's just a question of you can't do you know fancy stuff or necessarily drive in like a high stakes situation. Or you make a roll. We'll see. What do you guys want to do? What's what's the idea here? And wanna... Selena in the glove box. I believe you will find some of the PI badges, so we can maybe get through. We get them around our next. I made a fake one for you. And she kind of looks at it and this is this is this is good. Like when did you take that picture? I don't remember when you I was, uh, picture. well you see <laughs> and you remember Lou coming in to uh Mystic Maggie's had a camera with a telescopic lens on it uh for reasons. 
Um, you think maybe uh, she probably snapped a picture at some point with that thing? How dare in the I, in the middle of a reading you it, that it, you are the, the lighting was perfect. It looked just like an office. Oh, okay. Well, you know, good. You know, means to an end and all all that. Oh, he's just gonna love having to uh, throw this chain around his neck, isn't he? Oh, is he can remain as a uh, he'll be our wolf dog companion like Scooby Doo. <laughs> and Selena just sort of looks back to see which form Jacques is in and is like, uh, okay, good plan. So when so, we arrive, I yeah, kind of want to look for the, like, on the edges, so the people that look like nosy neighbor types. Okay. That's what I kind of want to look for when we get there. So there's so there's other businesses and those businesses haven't been shut down. It's really just this lot that has the uh, the diner on it. Uh, nearby businesses, things like like I said, gas station, convenience store. Uh, looks like there's a like a we'll call it a Burger King uh, that uh, that do seem to have people that are looking. It doesn't have a uh, kind of a, a static crowd. It ha- th- this this crime has happened a couple days ago. Like you guys are kind of coming to it a little late, um, but there are people who kind of pull in, or like you can tell, like there's a backup at the drive-through as people are kind of rubbernecking and trying to figure out what's going on and things like that. Every now and then, maybe somebody like walks up and looks and looks, but there's not really like a lingering crowd anymore. But there's definitely other places that you can go and talk to folks that might have seen something. Um, there are, there does appear to be a, um, what's it called? A uniform officer that does appear to be kind of making sure certain folks kind of come and go. Uh, they do seem to be actively, it's it's like late Monday morning. So there does still seem to be, there there seems to be something going on. Like it looks like they're doing something here, uh, currently, Uh, but you can definitely tell that there is a, um, an officer like right around like the, the the kind of crime scene tape that sort of thing and you can see through in through some of the windows and such there's a handful of people on the inside as well so with that then what do you want to do uh so lou will park close by and okay so uh, i will go talk to the officer uh just look confident and like you belong there and as far as anybody knows jacques is a cadaver dog you're, and so um, I'm imagining that the El Camino sort of has like the window that you can kind of slide in the middle. And so Selena will kind of put her head out the window like, yes, we will need our dog to come with us and making sure that Jacques is in the right form. <laughs> Jacques, Jacques in, a, in, in his wolf form. He just looks at you, cocks his head, gives that little low growl in his throat that, that signifies I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you hop out of the El Camino with a wolf. Uh, and he, he paws at the bag uh, to remind everyone that there's a collar and a leash in there mm-hmm. for just such this disguise. Okay. Along uh, this we disguise, have this the disguise, wolves are pretty big. Okay. We also have the little vest that goes over the German shepherds for the, for the police outfits. <laughs> <laughs> so Lou starts Jared. to pull that. He's like, ah. <laughs> Jacques is an emotional support wolf. Oh my goodness. This, this is a little writing on the vest. Poor Jacques. <laughs> Please don't pet me. I'm working. Gosh. <laughs> um so the, the so walk me through your approach here as you come up to the crime scene entrance. You see the you know, you see the the, the figure there. She's kind of staring you down as you walk up. Very stern look on her face, kind of curious. So what does it look like as I know, like, what are you, do you, are you guys wearing identification? And what is this identification of? Can you walk me through that? Uh, yes. Uh, so, hello, officer. Uh, I am with the uh, Lost Cause a PI investigation for one of the missing individuals has hired me uh, to take a look at the crime scene for them. And uh, we've got our cadaver dog here to actually find some in, uh, evidence that uh, maybe you uh, overlooked. You can see she's just kind of waiting, waiting. You're saying one of the missing people hired you? 
So no, the relative really of the missing person, this the family. Isn't... Sure. You, uh, am I saying the right family? Yes. So we're going in. Is that well? That's not quite how this works. Uh, what family uh, hired you? And As a circle family, she was uh, the one that mis missing was the uh, the waitress here. And you can see she pulls out a little. She's got like a little sheet there, and she kind of nods to herself. Okay. Well, this is an active crime scene, and we're not currently letting non. Yes, but see, I have the correct documentation for this uh, section of being allowed to go in now. Thank you. While well, well, right. well, this little debate's going on, Jacques does his shoulder roll and slips his lead and just kind of trots inside. <laughs> And he's sniffing. He's just smelling. He's like, he's trying to peck. He's trying to, you know, he's trying to get a little. Uh, roll Lou out. will kind of do a behind the back hand signal for Selena to do the same. Jacques, yeah, so well, Selena's in human is is in her Hamid form. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Jacques, go ahead and roll a stealth dex test. Um, I'll say, yeah, go ahead and roll stealth dex test. Now you're doing this like right in front of her. Sort yeah, of. he's not trying. He's not trying to yeah. really be too stealthy. More like he's a dog, and you know he's just okay. being a dog. Okay. Um. Uh, okay. Stealth and dex. Dex is three. Stealth is also three, and I've got two rage dice. A uh, ten and a ten and a nine. So that's five that's successes. Yeah, and it's a crit, too. So I'm going to say that you actually, even though you weren't necessarily managing to do it without her noticing, you do, in fact, do it, at least initially, without her noticing. As she mm -hmm. is looking down at her, at her sheet, she looks up at Lou, and she's like... Yeah, so oh, I've man. got these uh, 13 yeah. papers or so with all the correct signatures and from the, the judge. Ma'am? Ma'am? Yes, yes. Uh, that's not how this works. Uh, when and if... A time comes in which we will allow civilians uh, investigate. I am not a civilian. I'm a private eye. You are a private citizen, ergo, you are a civilian. So until such time as I am told by my superiors that people of your ilk are allowed. Oh, my scene. ilk. So that's how oh, you yeah. don't want to find the people that are missing. You just want to stand around and pretend like you're working. You can see she's just like, she just grimaces and like, ma'am, it's been a really long few days and there are a lot of people who want answers and... Yes, uh, I was hired to find some. Thank you for agreeing with me. Uh, I'm going to need you to just step away from the, step away from the line. Uh, <sighs> you can contact and she'll, she'll reach into her pocket and she'll hand over a card and the card will actually have her department. And the people that are act like, like, this is who you talk to. If you can get approval from them, then I will go ahead and I will let you into the scene. But in until that, until, until that time comes, you're going to have to wait over there. And she points over uh -huh. to the Burger King parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Thank you. I will do that right now. Okay. Uh, Selena, what were you doing while Lou was trying to just <laughs> Jedi mind trick? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what was Selena doing? She did a lot of face palming. There's a lot of opportunity in there. She wasn't watching. Oh, no, for sure. Jacques made it down onto the scene for now. There's other people uh, on the scene, but for now, he got onto the scene. So I would say Selena was kind of, while Lou had this woman's attention, kind of trying to see if she was able to see anything kind of as she was kind of flipping through her notes just to see if there was anything that was kind of like visible in the notes, what just trying to see if we could get like a, uh, Oh, just, um, you're just trying to see like what, what else was like in her, in her little sheet mm -hmm. that she had. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure. Uh, give me like an awareness wits. We'll say, cause it's quick and fast and see if you can notice it. Right. That's, uh, two for wits and three for awareness. So, and then you said we have a rage of two now, right? Yes. That, uh, yeah, you guys can correct. start with two. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, hmm. 
That's one success. I would like to spend a willpower, willpower and reroll three of them. Yeah, good. That's better. That's three successes. Okay. Uh, three successes, sure. Uh, so I'll say you notice... Um, okay. It, she's going through it fast, and she really just wanted to get to the list of names. And I'll say, like, one thing you notice, though, is that she has a make and model of a vehicle. Uh, so it's like Ford, Ford F-250. It's like 2009... Uh, and it has a horse trailer attachment and it's just, there's no, there's no specific details other than that. It just says that. And it's like written underlined. Um, when you look around Selena, one of the things that kind of occurs to you is that there are a lot of vehicles here. And as, and like you saw, as you drove up and you just maybe assumed, oh, it's just a bunch of, you know, cops and such like that. It's actually not the case. As you look around, you realize there's only a couple of official law enforcement vehicles. The parking lot is still largely filled with vehicles, like like actual people's vehicles. You don't see a Ford F-250, you don't see a horse trailer, you don't see anything like that, but you do see that there are vehicles here, like, like you presume, and all of them seem to have some sort of like crime scene marking, like they have been searched or they have been studied at some point over the last couple of days. Uh, and so you presume that they are there are probably people who worked here, people who were, were in the restaurant at the time. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, meanwhile, Jacques, you you managed to slip into uh, and pass this uh, this officer. There's nobody currently outside the diner uh, between the, the, the tape and where the diner's entrance actually is. And it does seem there's a handful of people inside. What would Jacques want to do uh, while he has a few moments of free time? So Jacques is primarily trying to pick up scent markers for Terra and then any scent markers he can he identifies as associated with a supernatural, like this the taint of the worm, the taint of the weaver, something like that. So we might be able to try to isolate what kind of entity did this. Okay. Uh all right. So this is I'm gonna probably make this like a like a tiered success. The more the more successes you get, the more information. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might get. Uh, we'll we'll call this. And this since you're you're specifically trying to sniff, we'll say survival, um, and maybe like a like a wits. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Meanwhile, uh, is going back to Burger King. Have it your way. <laughs> that's that's. Three successes. I'm going to go ahead. I only got one extra die, but I'm going to go ahead and spend a willpower so I can see if I can get another success out of this. Sure. I got a 10 on that, so that's uh, five successes in total. Okay, so uh, difficult roll. It's been a couple days. Stuff is kind of depleted, but you're still going to get a few things. You asked about Terra. Tara is somebody you probably have met a handful of times, uh, I would say, uh, through Calypso, or at the very least, there's a similar scent on them. And you do pick it up, and while it definitely seems like there's a, the, the, there's a heavier scent coming from inside the diner, you do sense it out here. And it does, where you kind of lose it, though, is at this empty side of the parking lot, kind of this dirt area where there's just like this big empty space. And you can see that there's a handful of like those little evidence cones and things like that that are, you know, kind of placed around what looks like tire marks and and and, and trailer marks and stuff like that. Uh, but that is where it seems to have have stopped. Um five successes. The other thing if you're if you're I'll say, I'll say this, you you certainly get a whiff of some kind of corruption in the air. Uh, it is overwhelming, actually, uh, in that it seems to sort of overload your senses to a degree. And maybe you even, you know, like dogs sometimes do, kind of just start sneezing almost like, like, like rapidly over and over again and almost violently. As you are, you're feeling something very familiar, definitely the taint of the worm. But you, but as you start thinking about the, the weaver specifically, and you did spend some time around those spiders on the inside of, of the umbra that were kind of crawling around that strange tumorous growth, 
uh, that was encasing your your Karen spirit. There's a little of that too. Like you feel like there's this this intertwining of things uh, in some way, uh, and it's to the point where it's it's like you're sneezing and you're sneezing and you're sneezing. And I will say that it's probably that sneezing that catches the attention of this officer, uh, who looks over. Uh, what? Hey, get out of here! Get get. Uh, hey, uh, a detective Peru. I'm There's going a- to activate Gremlins. So if she tries to call with uh, her do 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 uh, radio, uh, it is not going to work. She's not. She's literally avoiding it. And you haven't seen her use her radio at all, actually. Gremlins. Can you describe what that looks like when you actually tap into it? Sure. So uh, Gremlins is a charisma glory test um, and it causes technology to malfunction in an area. So essentially invisible to everybody else, but like tiny little gray green gremlins rise from the ground and just stick their hands in everything. What and so like what does it look like? I say like I would say to, to sort of like the to anyone looking at Lou when she tries to trigger this or or in, in implement this task. Like, is there a device that she uses as a way of of kind of creating it? Like, what what does it look like? Um. So she would probably. This is a charisma. Uh. So she and Glory. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, she is probably going to just like put her hand into her coat pocket and there's an old lock and key. And so when she turns the key, it unlocks the lock and that activates the gremlins. Roll your test. Like unlocking while, them. Yeah. While, while it's not necessarily going to interrupt anything she's doing because she's just calling really, really loud. Uh, hmm. But it might do something else. So go ahead and give it a roll. Um, all right, so I got uh, a two and an eight on my um, rage dice. Uh, so a success and a brutal failure on on the rage dice, and then the four on my third dice. Okay, so, so the brutal, as long as it's not two of them, you're okay because there's no okay. brutal. Uh, you need two for a brutal outcome. Okay. Uh, cool, so cool. how many successes? Was it just the one eight? Just one success. Okay, I'll say this. Uh, with just one success, you're not going to get a ton, but what you do get is you you reach in, you go to use that ability that you've become so accustomed to using, you feel that kind of, that, that, that key go in, and you hear a sound suddenly emit from the pocket that you, uh, that you actually normally keep this in. And it goes, bzz, bzz, almost like a modem or a fax machine kind of sound, but it, it, it sounds like this, this weird and sudden and, and quick, audible signal that just emits out of your uh, right at the moment in which you try to like activate that little gremlin thing and it causes your hand to shake yeah it causes your hand to just suddenly shake like it kind of stings you in a way and you yank it out of your something something is that's never really happened before it's a very very odd reaction so selena are you with me or did you sneak somewhere (laughs) Um, uh, so currently, Selena, uh, you see you. the officer. You see the officer has is, is like looking at Jack, uh, Jock, in his in his wolf form, and it's just like, hey, who's whose dog is this? Hey, Detective Peru, detective, and detective, S- detective, and she's like waving really annoyingly. And then Selena will just sort of because she's got the um like the harness and the leash and she'll just sort of look down and be like, Oh goodness. And she'll just sort of make a big show of like that. She has a, you know, all of the, you know, contraptions to go with this and be like, ah, I'm going, I'm going. And she just kind of like spins her long skirts around and kind of goes okay. shuffling in. Wait, Sonia, before quickly, I, I, the magic failed. Uh, I, I couldn't call my gremlins. Just be careful. And, and now go get Jacques as you were. So, and Selena's what? like turning around and then turning around and then turning around. <laughs> 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 it's okay, it's okay. Just like Keep up thumb. the act. <laughs> Guy comes out of the diner. He's got rolled up sleeves. He's got a tie on. He's got kind of dark khaki pants. Uh, you can see that he's uh, he's got, you know, he's got like a comb, combed over hair. It's not like fading, you know, it's, but he's, he's probably middle age. He's like, what? What do you want? To, it's a dog. You can handle it. Go get 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 out of here. We got sh- 
get these people out of here. You have one job. Can you please do it? And he looks extremely stressed as he's his Jacques, wife. Jacques walks over to this guy and sits right in front of him and gives him that little whine and that head cock as, you know, the, the I'm a dog, pet me. And what he wants to do is he wants to lock this guy's scent so okay. that he recognizes him in the future sure. if, if he runs across him He's again. Like, ah, God, God damn it. And he just reaches <laughs> down and he starts petting him. He's just like, all right, good boy, good boy. Who's, whose dog is that? Ma'am, you, ma'am. Is he motioning uh, coming, to Selena? Co- uh, coming, coming, all right, coming. Come on. come on, boy. Come on. Go, go, to mo- go to mama. Come on. And he's like kind of trying to like. The shock stands the up and uh, <laughs> runs between his legs and gets behind him. <laughs> <laughs> he looks back from around him. He gets he cocks his head at Selena and he gives that little half wolf smile. <laughs> Is that, yeah. Such rolls a dog. Rolls her eyes. Oh yeah. This you know, they keep you young. They keep you young. I'm assuming she's, you know, a little bit older maybe than uh, you know. So he's he's yeah you're de- you're definitely older than him and he's like let her let her through come on come on come on it's okay boy it's okay come on I know it's the it, uh, god the amount of sense and- here huh? <laughs> I just gotta be like driving you nuts and he's just like continuing to just sort of like almost absent mindedly kind of pet you oh you you got some haunches there <laughs> <He's kind of laughs> <talking to him. laughs> and Selena is I'm trying to see if this is going to be successful but Selena is going to try to. Um, kind of kick the dirt as she's walking kind of like under her long skirts and she's just going to say, you know, this one just likes, you know, I'm, I'm just about up to him and then he just likes to run in the opposite direction of where I am. So she's trying to see if mm-hmm. like Jacques will sort of go yeah. further into the crime scene area so that she can kind of chase after Tell him. me about it. Jacques, I've got Jacques looks to... up, he goes, he goes, okay. And he turns and he <laughs> runs further into the diner. <laughs> you run into the diner? So, oh, no! Yeah. Uh, as you I, I, burst just, into yeah, the diner, I'll, I'll, Jacques. Oh, just oh, I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll, oh, I'll, okay. I'll grab Let me come help. Quick. Let me come help. <laughs> Jacques, <laughs> you look inside, and it is a, it is a, again a very modest diner. There's nothing super fancy. Very old school. Tons of booths. Uh, you can see it's basically just booths with a, and then like all along, like either side as you come in, there's like scattering few tables on the wings that kind of recede back, uh, into like these different sections, maybe old school smoking, non-smoking. You see, there's a big counter in the middle kitchen, uh, off the other side and the usual accoutrements that you would see, uh, of a diner, coffee maker, et cetera, et cetera. It is a war zone in here. Like it is, there is just blood stains everywhere. Like you can see stools, you can see floor, like this little shiny linoleum that has, that like it's still peeking through here and there where the blood didn't necessarily cover it. But mostly there's like blood everywhere. There's, I mean, there's dozens of different prints He's, left and right. It's like impossible. Like, like there's just so many different like boot prints, footprints, you know, hand prints, like everything kind of smudges together into this big smorgasbord. He's looking specifically for damage. He's looking for like claw strikes, uh, bite marks, anything that might help him identify the size or type of of being that did this. If it's something supernatural that that uses those kinds of attacks. Okay, uh, let's do a let's do a quick um, let's do an awareness because this is going to be fast. As the people mm-hmm. inside the diners, many of whom have those like little uh, stuff on their feet. Uh, they're kind of covering what they're doing. They come racing over towards you. All of them like, no, 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 no. And then peruse chasing at you. So you're going to get like a quick look before like you're essentially surrounded at the front door. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's do awareness wits, I think is what we're going for. And again, the more, the higher you do, the better information. I want to take a picture of this. Uh, I got two tens, <laughs> a nine and an eight. So six successes um, oh and God. a four. Okay. So you're looking specifically for damage, for claws and stuff like that. I can tell you with um, with great certainty, there is there are absolutely no claw marks that you can see anywhere, nowhere. There's damage. There's what looks like more blunt damage, like something like 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 the you can see the countertop, you can see like the stools. It looks more like it took like a baseball bat or something like that. Something more of a blunt edge to it. Um, so that's step, definitely something you would notice. Um, there are, let's see, 
The other thing you would notice is there is mud uh, kind of on the ground mixed in significantly with uh, in some places kind of creating this weird sludge that looks like they've they've taken samples from. Uh, but some of it still remains. Crime, crime scene cure hasn't come through. Uh, what else can I give you? That's so many successes. I want to give you something better, but there's only so much. Um, can uh, can I can I maybe take some of that extra little success to have to actually run a little bit into some of that mud so I can try to get some of it on my paws? Absolutely, that sounds great. Yeah, we'll, we'll say we do that. You you come you dart in. You, like one of them leaps down like Peru tries to grab you from the door and you just dart out of his hands. And then you can see this other individual, maybe FBI, maybe Peru's partner kind of comes down like, no, no, God, God, who let a dog in here? As they try to, and then you hop like into it and you get it into your paws. And at that point you feel the arms wrap around you and you probably, if you wanted to, you could probably break it, but you can feel that they are now starting yeah. to. to yeah, he, he licks their face. <laughs> He's like, like, oh, God, <laughs> dogs. Oh, good. Uh, he's, he's probably, he's about 150, 140 he's a pounds. big dude, yeah. You're yeah. a wolf, so wolves <laughs> yeah, yeah. are much bigger than dogs. So, like, we're, we're stretching. But nonetheless, it, it could look like a very, a you could look dog. like it's a very fine. big husky or something. He's a wolf dog. On the so Alaskan Malamute. You feel one of them try to pick you up, like, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, no, and then you could feel them kind of gently but firmly kind of grab, like, you know, the back of your neck a little bit and start kind of leading you out. They do not let Selena inside. Like, they are firm on that. But they'll lead He trots back. out, tail yeah. wagging, head high, feeling that he's successfully completed his mission. <laughs> <laughs> Selena, you're able to get the, the, the slip, the collar, whatever it is you have around Jacques once more. And uh, you can see that they are none too happy with you uh, as they begin to escort you to the other side uh, of the, the crime scene. Uh, but successful incursion mission by, <laughs> by Jacques the dog. Who knew Jacques was going to be the uh, comic relief? <laughs> yeah. I mean, somebody needed to get in there. Comic um, relief? What are you talking about? No, He's that was primary investigator. What are you <laughs> right now is I am going to cover our tracks. Uh, knowing what happened last time, I'm going to do this cautiously, expecting maybe it might fail as well. But I'm going to activate right of the forgotten record, um, okay. which would uh, essentially make any recording of us unviable. And mm -hmm. um, if anybody is trying to remember our faces later, it is also uh, fuzzy and difficult to do. And it is a wisdom and investigation to check to do that. So you are not I mean, being focused on right now. There is so no. much chaos going on there. Yeah. So describe what it looks like for Lou when she does this and then make your roll. Uh, so Lou will kind of like, she's not being focused. She's outside of the diner. She'll just kind of like sit on the curb really quickly. Um, she'll have to like close her eyes and she's just kind of trying to find all of the pings, like a, a radar where they'll look for all the objects in the water um, and then just kind of boom, send out a, a pulse. So you're using, you're using essentially electronic equipment, equipment with signals, equipment like that. You go to activate and, and your right's going to go through. Your right's going to go through. If you succeed, the people forgetting your faces, all of that's fine. But you notice that whatever device that you try to use. So roll your test. As long as you're successful, then then at the very least, the mundane part of people forgetting your faces is going to take effect. But when you try to activate your your devices, anything that has um, anything that has a, a, a like electronic signal of some kind, Anything you tap into, audibly, you hear that same strange, like, modem fax, uh, facsimile kind of thing kind of pop through. And it, it again, and it, it has an odd effect to it. It sounds, it sounds similar, but it's not quite the same. It is the closest approximation. And then, in addition to that, like, anything that you might have used that had a screen... It's just like this snow white stuff pops up. I'm and going you can to have just... to buy all new everything. This is terrible. Uh, and how'd you do on your roll for the right? Um, I was wondering, can I use, I believe we're using the audience dice to have a, a re-roll. 
a one dice reroll. Yes. I forget. Or, I think so. Yeah. Because what yeah. powers the three and then, yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. Because we just do. So the, I would yeah, like to fine. use an audience dice to do a one dice reroll, please. Thank you. Oh, God. All right. So I rolled one twice on this dice. So it is going to go away now. Um, but I got two successes. Okay. So uh, you're, you're able to. At the, at the very least, I'm going to say, like, mechanically, again, you're going to get the effect. You're going to get the effect. But the there's something about this area where you're, you're, you're so technologically savvy. Something's up with the signals. And all of your electronic equipment, anything that, that's taking in electronic signal, radio signal, whatever kind so of signal. so much money that I'm losing right now. <laughs> and all of it seems to be disrupted in some way to the point where it feel it's not broken. It's just like, it's not functional right now. Okay. Bags of rice. It's a very important. And it, Selena's it, just like, you know, whenever there's a cute dog around, no one actually pays attention to the people that are around the dog. Everyone looks at the dog and that's the only thing they remember is how cute the dog was. Right. And then she sort of takes advantage of like knowing that like Jacques isn't going to kind of change format and he's like still connected. Like, Right there, good boy. <laughs> she says, sort of. He looks like, up, and you you see that look in his eye that says, "I I really want to do something horribly <laughs> mischievous here," but instead he's focusing on keeping the paw that was in the mud up. So he's sort of limping, like he's got a you know, like he maybe stepped on something in there, a piece of glass or something. Uh, and and that way he's, he's telegraphing to Selena and Lou that he's got sure. something on his paw that we need to pay attention to. Once you are, once you're kind of outside, uh, Selena or Lou, one of like the officers start calling to you. Like, actually, I'm going to say they normally would try to get your contact information, who you are, question you. But for some reason, maybe they're just distracted. There's the cute puppy. Maybe it's Lou's right. Whatever it is, the thought just vacates their minds and they just kind of let you go and they start arguing amongst themselves about whose fault it was that they someone let a freaking dog into a crime scene where there's 20 something people who likely were murdered and you guys get back to your el camino in the bark in a burger king parking lot and i'll say that selena probably has something so she has some sort of like a a Ziploc bag or something that she can, you know, kind of flip over her hand and kind of wipe the bottom of your paw and then kind of flip it back mm -hmm. closed again. Of course. I, yeah, I also have forensic tips. science as my science. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. If you could get into that crime scene, man. Then I know, sure. right? Well, I was thinking I could uh, <laughs> sneak in the back, but then apparently there's quite a few people in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So you've got a couple little things that you discovered. Um, does seem like the, I mean, I shouldn't say cat out of the bag in a wireless stream, but we'll say it anyway. It, like they're not letting you, like it def definitely seems like they're being a little bit more concerned now letting you get anywhere close, but you are at the very least you're in, in this, you're in this, in this, uh, this parking lot, you got a handful of leads and, and notes and observations. Like what's next for you guys? So Jacques one, he would smell his paw cause he wants to see if he can identify like if he smelled where this dirt comes from before, you know, he's been in this area for a while. Is this, is it distinctive? Um, I would say it's probably not, you would know, I I, I mean, no role. Cause I don't, I don't want to like, you probably wouldn't be able to zero it in too much, but it definitely has the smell of desert. Uh, as in it's not, it's not neighborhood. It's not, it's not any of these suburbs that these people live and put there. It's it's this is actually from out in the wild. Like this is you 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 smelled this smell. You felt this this grain. It is this the type of thing that you felt beneath your paws before. It probably doesn't have the specificity to like pinpoint it, but it's definitely desert. It's, it's wilderness. He jumps. He Jacques jumps into the into the seat of the El Camino. Um, and ducks down and then shifts back into his naked human form. Selena, <laughs> can I have my pants? Here, Lou's got him. Here's your bag. Thanks, Lou. He uh, slips yes. into he slips into the shorts distastefully, and he's like, "Right, I caught Tara's scent. 
it smelled like she was taken outside the diner to that area over there. Uh, maybe loaded into a vehicle of some sort or driven off because that's where her scent ended. I picked oh. up a horrible, very strong smell of corruption. It was worm and weaver intertwined together. Uh, when I got in, I got a quick look around. There were no claw marks or, or bite marks anywhere on the furniture or anywhere. It looked like blunt force trauma, like whatever came through there crushed things. Um, but there was a lot of this mud around that, that you got off my paw, and it smells of deep desert. So it's not the same as the destruction that happened in Heart and Soul? No, there were no... I, I didn't pick up any scent of any black spiral dancers. There was no evidence of... Of a of a werewolf in there. Whatever did this is obviously supernatural, but it's it's not a it's not a garu. Well, it's uh if they if there was no fighting back, uh, maybe some things that can charm that many people, some things that uh, can I mean there was hypnotize? fighting back that entire the entire inside of the diner was an abattoir. There was blood and viscera everywhere. Hmm. They were torn limb from limb. I don't know if they all died there, but but if it was a one way fight, who's to I don't say know that it was. All I can tell you is that there was no claws and no bites. Hmm. I mean, humans fight back like like sad little toddlers with their pathetic little fists, incapable of doing any real damage anyway. Yeah. Well, yes, I suppose. Uh... We did hear that there was a, a horse trailer. So um, I um, got a uh, I got a glimpse when um, when this one was being chastised about not being a real cop. I was able to take a peek at the uh, the notebook. Chastised. And I think she was dressing you down pretty thoroughly. I don't there. think the English was there. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, in her in, in her notebook, uh, it was a 2009 pickup with a horse trailer. So Jacques, if you caught her scent going out to somewhere in the parking lot, maybe there was a horse trailer and that's where they loaded all the bodies up into. That would be an efficient way to move lots of bodies at once. That's true. That would make sense. Is there? Well, you, guys are, well, you guys are sitting here. I would say, Lou, there's one thing you notice. Let's say okay. you would notice this as, as you're looking around this little strip of, you know, like kind I of. I was going to go of, investigate the area that Jacques was uh, mentioning anyway, the, but yes. There are security cams. Like you can see them. You can see them on Burger King. You can see them on the streetlights. You can see them. Um, you can see traffic cams. Uh, that's a common thing in Arizona. Uh, traffic cams, even in outskirt towns that aren't necessarily part of it. Like there's traffic cams everywhere. So there are there are security cams everywhere, including the diner. You could definitely tell. So there are there is that. Uh, but that is something I think Lou probably would have picked on picked up on without even really having the, to roll for anything. Um, looking at my phone again, is it still white noise, crappy, not working? Or has, are we far enough away from the diner that maybe things have started to come back online? Build your phone out. Got no cellular, like there's no signal at all. Like there's nothing. There was no Wi-Fi signals when you kind of look I for do not like this King area. Wi-Fi, anything like that. It's because you rely on the weaver too much. Uh, the weaver is fine, Jacques. It's uh, uh let me see the here. The weaver is the death of the green mother. <laughs> um, so here's a question. I've got an ability called Spider Song, um, which allows me to, listening to the vibrations of the weaver's web, the werewolf can eavesdrop on any kind of long-distance verbal communication. If there's cameras, that wouldn't have mics in them, right? That's just video? Yeah, these are pure, okay. yeah this is pure video. Okay, never mind. That was my idea. Okay. Lou, I, I, I don't know as much those phones and everything as you do but might it be useful to see if you can kind of walk around the area and see kind of where the center of that seems to be if it's like well yes but also let's break into the burger king and go into the security room so we can uh steal the tapes and see what they were seeing 
And Selena just like turns up her nose at the idea of like going into a chain that's not what she would prefer to do. And then think of it like you're liberating the people from the terrible Burger King. It's like, yeah, is there a mom just, and pop burger shop here exactly. that we can break into instead? <laughs> that is I have S- Selena's version of aging hippie is a uh, hashtag by local. They put some yeah, yeah. chemicals in that meat. <laughs> Can't even call it meat anymore. <laughs> what do you guys want to do? But yes, that's that's a very good idea. They will absolutely have all of the security cameras to keep all of the, you know food safe that they have in there so i mean uh, if you want to go lecture them it would be a great way for me to get in the back with you distract them Uh, i guess i'll go get something uh, Jacques, do you want to remain human and go with Selena, or do you want to come uh, try and break in a few doors with me? Uh, do you need me to break those doors? Oh no, I can I can definitely pick the locks. I just thought it might be fun. All right, I'll follow you. Okay. Okay. So. We don't necessarily have to play this out as like Ocean Eleven style. Why doesn't everyone just tell me what they're doing <laughs> to contribute to breaking into the security ma- or manager's office or whatever? It's the manager's it has office. It. Yeah, where the cameras are. You go inside. Into I'll say when you get inside, there are not many people in here. Everybody who's in here that's actually eating is on the side of the restaurant, looking out the window at the crime scene place, and then we're talking like three or four people. And there's probably three or four people working. So there's not a whole lot of people in here. You get, you know, generic, generic uh, pop music on the radio, kind of play kind of low. Um, I'll tell you one thing that seems kind of interesting, though, is that when they do go up when someone does go up to pay, you notice that they're only taking cash. Like there's like there's only like an exchange of cash. Like there's no like they're not even and then like they're they're manually opening registers and closing registers and stuff. You're getting the sense, Lou. Again, you're the tech head. Like with all this different stuff you're seeing, the signals stuff not coming through. Like, you, like there's no way to get credit card, you know, get credit cards approved and stuff like that. Like they're actually having to go old school cash here. Oh man, they shouldn't have gotten rid of their old uh, '90s card uh, stamp thing. Shunk, shunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those I remember exactly. those. <laughs> yeah. Is would there happen to be a? Like a now hiring sign. Like sometimes there's signs out that it's like interview on the spot. Because uh, that sure, could be yeah. a way to keep okay. a manager. Oh, that's, gonna be- that's, that's exactly what Jacques was thinking. He was just yeah. going to go up and ask for a job. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, I really want to see Have that. Have at it. Who wants to do it? Uh, no, no, go for it, Selena. Sure, you, you brought it up first. Go for it. <laughs> I have zero uh, skills in that direction, but oh, sure, I will go up. Jocks is, <laughs> is a very good-looking uh, man. Oh, uh, there you go. Go ahead, Jock. <laughs> All right. So Jock slips into his Converse and, and he's, he's walking in. He pulls his T-shirt on, and yeah, he's he does have the stunning advantage. Okay, being you know, okay, s- supermodel, good-looking guy. Yes, one of these random, you know. It gets early in the day. It's like it's like it's actually right around lunchtime. So this isn't an uncommon time to come. But there really aren't that many people here. So like there's only a handful. Uh, but they asked if you need to take the order or something like that. But, you know, and eventually you're asking for a good job. Manager comes out and usual Burger King managerial attire. Do they still wear ties? I haven't been to Burger King in like 10 years. I, I don't know. I have it's no idea. It's like been probably years longer. For me. I don't know. Yeah, it's <laughs> like I, I don't know. So um, but you see a, a woman Put her in her 40s, a little heavy set, uh, and she comes out, kind of sweat coming down. It's Arizona. Uh, it's uh, late summer. It's Burger King, so she's in the back. But she comes up, and you can see she almost does a double take as she looks at Jacques when she comes up. Uh, well, hey, uh, uh, you are interested in employment. Is that correct? Absolutely. I find Burger King to be a fascinating slice of Americana, and I would enjoy the opportunity to work under 
your management. That's a very interesting accent you have there. Is um, is that um, what is that? Is that is that are you is that Texan? Is that what that is? No, man, I I come from a, a wee bit farther east than that. Uh, out in the West Virginia Hills is where I originally oh. was born. Oh, that's that's amazing! Wow, that's wonderful. Um, that's that's fantastic. Okay, well, um, wh- what is your name again, sir? Why, you can call me Jacques. My name is Jacques Roulette. Jacques Roulette. That is, whew, wow, what a name! What a name! Well, I'll tell you what. Um, well, we um, we are hiring. Technically, though, we've had a bit of a downturn this weekend, but I've got nothing else to do. So why don't we just have a seat over here? Uh, and let's just, um, let me just, um, oh, geez. Did you bring like a resume or anything? Do you have any experience teaching or teaching? Do you have any experience working in a restaurant? Sorry, I totally forgot what we were doing for a second. Real life came in. Miss I. <laughs> I must be completely honest with you. I have never worked in a restaurant before. I, I've done a bit of, uh, I've done some veterinary technical assistance and, and the like, but I just like uh, people and I'd love the opportunity to, to help serve you. I suppose then that, you know, that sounds, I mean, a veterinary technical assistance is a lot like probably, you know, working here, you know. A lot of high stress, you know, dealing with um, with animals. Uh, <laughs> you probably deal with them when they're alive. <laughs> OK, so why don't. Uh, and so she like leads you over to a place to sit and she kind of sits down and, and, and he gives a look back to Lou and Selena like I <laughs> I'm making the <laughs> ultimate sacrifice here. So <laughs> I appreciate you. Sir. <laughs> Uh, Lou and Selena, then, what are you two doing to help contribute to this? Uh, Selena, let's uh, break in the back and uh, get into the... We might need to take the... Probably they have VHS. There's no way this is like a modern setup. Uh, but we can take Perfect. that off premises. There's uh, no chain. way they've updated the technology in like 40 years. They have optical scanners that you have to get through to get into the manager's office. <laughs> I now. do not believe That's what that. you get. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> DNA breath test. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Jacques, you need to make a bigger sacrifice. Kiss her for her breath. Um. Okay, so the two of you are trying to break in to the manager's office, we'll say. Uh, yeah. Which, okay. So just tell me what you're doing. I'll have you each do a roll. Uh, you'll get, we'll say, a bonus uh, to your rolls because of Jacques being a distraction here for uh for the for the manager uh so what what tactic are you taking you give me a pool basically um i have streetwise sleight of hand so i would like to actually pick the locks if i can uh that sounds great we'll do that um probably dex i would think probably if you're picking a lock it's a mechanical lock we'll say uh okay uh so go ahead and give that a roll selena how are you contributing to this uh, I've got Jack and Squat that goes to anything like this. Um, okay. I maybe just, I mean, I'm high awareness, so I'm clearly the Look lookout. Out. Look out. Okay. That works. Uh, awareness, uh, wits. Is it? Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Four I successes from Lou. Four successes. I was meant to break locks. Oh, oh, for sure. For sure. Oh, you're breaking the lock? I thought you were picking Breaking in the locks. The locks, they are no longer functioning. You know? You can just go Carino's form and rip the door off its hinges. The delirium will help. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah it'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> it's not like it's not like vampire with their masquerade nonsense. Okay. I guess um, it just makes uh, everybody forget. It's like the masquerade. Yeah, exactly. Sort of. Uh, what spending, did, another, send it, spending another willpower. Okay. You also three can use... Of- these audience dice oh yep could uh didn't so um six seven seven ten six seven seven ten that's another four that's like eight six (laughs) this is the smoothest operation (laughs) that the two of you (laughs) have ever done no one is paying attention selena you should help (laughs) me break in some corporations more often 
<laughs> one of one of the workers like runs the register some like 19 year old kid or something out of high school but isn't in college or something like that walks past you goes outside to smoke a cigarette doesn't even look up and doesn't care and it's just outside smoking a cigarette you can hear like the cackle of laughter of of the the manager talking to Jacques, and you can hear the sounds of her hair flapping down as she like runs it past beyond her ears and you can hear everyone else just sort of looking outside theorizing about what might have happened across the street and selena you never have to worry about anything at one point you're getting ready maybe to like warn lou of this guy and he just walks like two feet in front of you never once looks up doesn't care I mean, You're these are Burger King employees exactly. that really could care less yeah. about their... Uh... You guys each get four successes. Eight successes is way more than you needed. Like, like you really didn't need that many. Uh, but I'll take the willpower. So you get into the office, Lou, and... And you're, you're probably like fiddling with the lock. Like, what the hell's going on? Why isn't this working? And then you realize, oh, it's open. And you just turn the handle and push the door. And I was you hoping see... for some more excitement like this. <laughs> it's... It is very much anything but exciting. As you break into the manager of a Burger King's office, you can see that there is a, uh, you know, an old school kind of grimy metal desk from like 1950 that's still sitting in here somehow. There's all these different papers scattered about. You see work schedules, etc. Uh, there's a little locker. There's a computer that doesn't appear to be on. Uh, there's a safe, uh, very common. Uh, a couple other things here and there, bulls and borns, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I would say, Lou, not hard for you to, to, to do. You just want to take the hard drives. Do you want to just yes. take, what do you want to, what do you think? Yeah. The VHS is a hard drive, <laughs> whatever <laughs> cheap things that they have. Oh, so there's no way they've updated from it's VHS. Come on now. <laughs> no, no, no. King. They've got the VHS. We need to find a VHS player. It's going to be the biggest challenge. You know what? You had four successes. There is a random VHS player <laughs> that's sitting Excellent. here. That is mine now. And you, and you took it. And then you also like reach in and you grab the uh, the the hard drive, and then you leave. Hard drive. None the wiser. Everything's no one's even looking at you. Again, the guy comes back in from smoking a cigarette. Selena kind of just kind of just like looks up, hey, and just keeps going. Doesn't care. Lou, you come out of the you come out of the the room. Shock. You are offered a job at Burger King. <laughs> Uh, doesn't even like doesn't care about like tax forms nothing doesn't want anything just like oh yeah can you start you know tomorrow we could definitely use your help uh really class the joint up a bit Jacques you see uh, like Lou and Lou <laughs> giving you thumbs up from the window outside I have to say this has been the most enlightening interview that I have ever been on in my life and I guarantee that if I'm ever to flip a burger, it will be here at your side starting tomorrow. You can see that that makes her very happy. She blushes a little bit and and you are able to leave with a new job if you want it, Jacques. Like if you really want to dig into this as a side side story, we are more than willing to do that. It's a long commute <laughs> from your growth, but you know. He stands up, walks out. As soon as he gets off, peels his shirt off, peels his Converse off, ties him around his neck, starts strolling over towards the El Camino. I'm imagining the manager is still she's kind still of looking. watching your walk. She's looking so out the window. And not a problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> you get into okay. the El Camino. What I've got the now? goods. We're in. Let's uh, go somewhere where she's we can see them. a VCR. She has a VCR. <laughs> For no reason. She's just carrying an old VCR. They definitely had VHS in there. <laughs> okay. Every human in there is stank of fat and death. I'm never going into another place like that again. Chuck, you are so judgmental. Yeah. You really have got to just rein <laughs> that in. Selena, do you want but to go you really burgers did. at Burger King? No, but that wasn't the point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're are we driving away from this little area? Yes, we are. We'll drive into the sunset with our goods. All right. So, are we going to go? Are you planning to go back and see what you can scrub off of this? Or are you going back to your grove I think, home? I think the grove probably doesn't have very much technology. Oh, no, they have their, they, no, they have normal stuff. Like, it's not like, okay. they're not, it's not over in abundance, but it is a business. It is a business, so they have what they okay. need for that. 
Yeah. Then yeah, we would go back to the uh, the Karen. Okay, the Karen. Uh, <laughs> Snuck so it in there. <laughs> um, I tell you what, Lou, roll a uh, roll a tech intelligence test. So we'll say the drive back is uneventful. Obviously, it's it's about an hour back to the Grove, to be honest, because there's like you guys were a little bit away from it already, from where you started being at. Uh, what the hell was it called? Mystic Maggie's Maddening Emporium, something. Um, it was then, all M's. Yeah, whatever. There's an M in uh, M's more successes. Okay. So we'll say, as you come back in, it's uh, early afternoon by the time you get back. Uh, there's definitely work that's being done. You can see the gates are open. Plenty of crews here. Landscaping crews, uh, you know, farming crews, building crews. You can see there's construction workers that are rebuilding the church. The church took priority. There's Others, they're trying to fix roofing panels, replace windows. Like, there's definitely work being done outside contractors, some some that you know. Like, it's not like random people that you just grabbed off of, you know, off of Yelp or, or not Yelp, off of like, um, what's it called? What's that thing called? Like, Angie's List or something. It's um, instead, though, you you find like the office area, you go in, there is, again, your, your devices start to work again. So you check your phones, those of you that have them, you can see cellular signal. You can see Wi-Fi signal. You can see you've missed a bunch of messages as well. Oh, I can live again. Apparently, your son um, hit somebody with your car. A little thinner, better. Uh, but we'll get into that later. And uh, you you go ahead and you, you pull up. Start going through all of the footage. And most of the footage is really mundane. And it takes a little time. So we're going to take this is literally going to take like a couple hours, even though you have like a basic window. It's going to take a couple hours to kind of go through it and scrub it, etc. And what you eventually find, like where it actually starts getting interesting as you're kind of, you know, going through it pretty quickly is when it starts to get this strange kind of feedback, like this signal disruption, you can definitely see it's just like this, this, that's the Burger King view right outside. Uh, and you can tell that at a certain point, even though there's cars coming and going, everything looks fine. People coming and going. And it has a has a view of the street and a view of the of the diner's parking lot. And doesn't necessarily the angle doesn't necessarily catch the entirety of the diner, but you get a little bit of it here and there. What you notice is 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 really peculiar, actually, as you start seeing um, this cluster of static, uh, visual static, begin to form, like very localized at first. It starts on one side, uh, like we'll say kind of northward in terms of uh, cardinal directions coming off that side of the, the screen. It's localized. It's as, as if it's like just moving down the street, very slow moving. Not the pace of a car, but like the pace of like a pedestrian. And you just see this strange disruption. As it goes by, you can see that the disruption kind of grows a little bit. And then eventually it shifts and moves off. And you're just, there's, you can't see a person. You can't see a thing. It's just this weird, strange visual disruption. You see it, that travel like up into the parking lot of the diner. You see the very bottom, vague, grainy of the diner, like kind of door open and close. You're just, there's nothing for a little bit. And then it gets huge. Like suddenly, coming from the top part of the screen where the diner would be, you just start seeing that disruption growing and growing and growing and growing until it covers the entirety of this, whatever screen you're on as if the entire camera now is just being disrupted in some fashion. And you realize that as you're doing this, there's like a, that sound, you know how, how sometimes mother, uh, motherboards and stuff, actually they, they make physical sound, not through speakers. You start to notice it, you hear it, and it's that same kind of uh, modem-like sound, but it doesn't sound quite right. It sounds almost humanized. It sounds almost like, like a digital voice in a way, or the way somebody might sound if they're, they over-auto-tune while, sw- while singing. It just becomes so mechanical, so digitized, and it sounds extremely pained and then you watch as the monitor in front of you just just flashes and the monitor goes dead and that's where we're gonna go ahead and stop for tonight 
We'll pick up there next week with that. And that is uh, episode three of uh, Werewolf. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Good yeah. stuff. Fantastic. An electronic oh, ghost, Jacques' favorite. I, I didn't think we were going to be interviewing oh, for. Uh, of course, Perry of course, the Weaver was going to win Festus and infect us. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Okay, and next week we should have Jeremy back. So, which is great that we're we're pick up right uh, at our at our Grove. So uh, he's just just down the street, and hopefully we'll have uh, Evan back in a couple of weeks as well. He might be in the next arc, but uh, but we should have Jeremy back next week. All right, so session three. Thank you for those of you who are hanging out tonight. Thank you to the Rays. We got a bunch of Rays. I really do appreciate that. Sorry, I don't always notice them to call them out. Uh, but thank you, thank you. I think Melissa was giving shout outs most of the time. Uh, so thank you so much for that. We really, really, really do appreciate it. Why don't we do a couple quick closing plugs? We'll get on out of here. We'll do a raid, all the fun stuff. Uh, we'll start with Aaron. Aaron, uh, what's going on with Garblag? Uh, well, with Garblag next week, uh, Pete, Garbag, Garblag Pete is on vacation, so there'll be nothing on Wednesday or Thursday, but Millie will be running some Coriolis, um, so you can always go back and check out some of the Garblag's YouTube. They did finish their The One Ring uh, earlier today, The Battle of the Barding, so that uh, that final episode will be up on YouTube before too long, so you can check that out. Fantastic. But more fun is what we've got going on tomorrow night right here. We will be doing a special spooky time one shot of the new game by Grant Howitt and Will Kirby out of Rowan Wreck, Rook and Deckard, uh, Eat the Reich, where a bunch of allied commando vampires are going to jump into Nazi-controlled Paris to drink Hitler's blood and crush the Nazis with one fell blow. Yeah. So that should be fun. We go from werewolves tonight, vampires tomorrow. Fantastic. Very excited. Uh, all right. Uh, what do we got after that? Uh, nothing on Saturday, actually. We're taking Saturday off for the first time in forever. As speaking of finishing one ring, we just finished our two year long or roughly two year long one ring campaign. It's very sad to finish, but it was also awesome to finish. And we got some cool stuff. We're going to be playing soon, not in the next week or two, but soonish. Uh, we're going to be starting up a new Call of Cthulhu game in its place for a little bit. Uh, but we will more than likely come back to the one ring at some point. Don't worry. Uh, after that, Monday, uh, we uh, we're back to Fragged Empire, our space sci fi game. Very excited for this one. Indie game out of Australia. We have a couple, we have Session Zero and one other session under our belt. So if you haven't started watching it, perfect time to jump in. Uh, Tuesday, you can see all of us here, along with our, our buddy Steven, uh, playing some Marvel multiverse role playing game as we're doing an X Men themed game. Uh, and then next Thursday, oh, go ahead, Kipser. Early 90s television X Men style. But set in 20s, 20 something. No, shh, ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then obviously next Thursday we'll be back to Werewolf. Uh, and again, for those of you who rated, uh, I got the names now, uh, Inns and Oddities, uh, The Rebel Pilot, and uh, oh my gosh, let me get the last one. Sorry. Uh, the uh, High Shelf Collective. Uh, for those of you who follow our channel normally, go follow them. And for those of you who came over tonight, consider following us. It'd be great. Wonderful. And go check us out on YouTube as well. Adventures in Lollygagging. We had all tons of games up there as well. Uh, have a great night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for uh, all the fun. We're going to go ahead and raid. Who the hell are we going to raid? We're going to raid Happy Jack's RPG. Uh, so go ahead and follow that raid. Have a great rest of your night. And we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Good night.